Today, we want to take this part of the scripture we read here in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, from verse 18 and ahead, to speak about the subject, perfect to do his will. Perfect to do his will. I have taken the title for this sermon from this verse 21 that speaks concerning the desire that has the Lord that we may be perfect, made perfect by the hand of the Lord to do his will. The book of Hebrews that we studied for all these months is a wonderful uh, teaching of the word of God concerning our spiritual lives. If you consider the many parts that we studied during these months, we'll understand that uh, basically the book of Hebrews is geared to strengthen our spiritual lives concerning eternity. I mean, giving us a wonderful insight of what we have received through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And at the same time, the Lord is encouraging us and showing us how we may do our best that we may please Him, that we may adore Him, that we may do things for the glory of His name. Now, since this is the last part of the book that we will study, then... I have taken these verses that speaks precisely concerning this. It is the end of the book and it is speaking to us concerning being people totally trained that we may do the will of God. I mean, because the Lord has given us a, that wonderful insight of eternity, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, how the blood of Jesus cleanses ourselves from all, every sin. And since the Lord has revealed in this book how we are heirs together with Jesus, because we have a wonderful inheritance up there, in the presence of the Lord. And since this part of the scripture that we have been studying speaks to us concerning how we may come freely into the presence of the Lord. Because the Lord himself opened the way for us. Then now the Lord is encouraging us that we may do his will. Why? That at the end we may see all these things that we have studied right there. It is important that we not only receive the knowledge of the word of God. But the Lord wants us to be sure that we, we really have what we have received in the teaching of the word of God. The Lord wants us to, to be sure that we'll not miss it. That when we finish our race... Everything will be right there. Remember that is what we started when we started um, chapter 12. Then the Lord says that we must run with patience the course that is set before us. And that we must keep ourselves looking unto Jesus. And that we must do our best. Now the Lord is teaching us. And at the same time like. Condensing all these teachings. And telling us. Well listen. I have taught you all these things. Now I want you to be sure. That all these things I have taught you. Are yours. That you will never miss. The goal. The mark. Of your calling. Amen. So the Lord is telling us in these verses from verse 18 until the end. And I want to point a little few things from verse 18. In verse 18 it says, pray for us. For we trust we have a good conscience in all things willing 
to live honestly. It is really important for believers that want to finish their race that we have a good conscience. Remember that Christian life is private. It's individual. You come to the house of God. The Lord has given you and I. The Lord has given us the opportunity to come together as a body of believers. But concerning our relationship with him, it is totally independent. Individual. Our relationship, our personal relationship with the Lord. And therefore, the Lord is calling us here that we may have a good conscience in all things willing to live honestly. Because the will is yours, mine. The Lord gave us this great and wonderful blessing. Free will. Remember. You and I have been made with free will. Nobody will have any chance to answer in your place because the Lord gave you the opportunity and he has given you and I a conscience and a free will. So therefore, it is important that we may understand that our conscience is what will make this relationship. Nobody has to tell you anything. After you know the word of God. You have a conscience. And you must make sure. That your conscience is. As it says here. Good conscience. Because the Lord says, if your heart rebukes you, greater than your heart is God. Are you following me this morning? A good conscience means that your heart is not rebuking you. That you are at peace totally with the Lord and with your conscience. Because the conscience will be with you all your days. Praise God. Are you following me this morning? Do you understand what the Lord is explaining to us now? It means your conscience has something really important to do. In your personal relationship with God. Because you are the only one who, who can tell if your conscience is a good conscience. Nobody can answer concerning this in your place, in my place. It is important, my dear friends, this morning. How do we deal with this matter? Is our conscience at peace with God? Do we find our lives uh, in normal and good fellowship with the Lord? Are our deeds pleasant in the sight of God? Your conscience will tell you. When things are right and you are living according to the word of God, your conscience will tell you, come on, be glad. Don't worry. But if the conscience is not in a good standard with the Lord, your conscience will tell you, come on, no way. Cannot do things this way. It is important. Now, let's go forward. And it says in verse 19, But I beseech you the rather... To do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. Since the apostle is finishing 